Newfoundland and Labrador Premier Dwight Ball and his Liberals have won a second term in the province, now forming a minority government. Well, thank you, uh, Jerry. No one can say that my political life has been boring. <laughs> I am so grateful to be happy to, to run in the district of Humber Grove this morning. And I want to say that, you know, they've been remarkable over the last month in putting up. Here to break it all down is NTV's Kellyanne Roberts. Kelly, great to talk to you this morning. Uh, voters chose to return the Liberals under Premier Ball to government, uh, but they've got 20 seats. Uh, the legislature has a total of 40 seats, which means they have to work with someone in order to make this minority work. What is your sense of how they're going to shepherd their, uh, their agenda forward? Well, it's definitely going to be interesting, Ben. I mean, you have two parties that threw a lot of mud, mud throughout this election, and, you know, the Tories not backing down. They didn't concede, and Chess Crosby going into his speech saying that he had two speeches, and he threw both out and went off script. And then by going off script, he said a lot of very interesting things that he's not impressed with the ball government, and he continues to stay that way. So to see that these two parties are going to potentially have to work together leaves many here wondering how that's going to work. Now, the NDP also doing a bit of surprising to everybody, taking three seats in the House, and so they're also going to play a pretty big factor here, more so than I think people anticipated. And we also have two independents in the House, both being former Liberals, one also being a former Tory. So we have a lot of um, players at play here, and it's going to be very interesting how this unfolds over the coming days, especially between Chess Crosby and Dwight Ball, because neither of them necessarily got along throughout this campaign, and I don't anticipate to see much of that going forward. Uh, Dwight Ball, in his acceptance speech and thanking everybody, you know, he didn't say much about the Tories, but near the end, you could tell that he was ready to really lay into Chess Crosby the exact same way that Chess Crosby clearly came out guns blazing towards Dwight Ball in his, uh, his speeches last night. He, uh, he did stop media at one point and said, he'd be doing a news conference today. So it'll be interesting to see if he's kind of toned down his message and coming back across and saying that they will attempt to work together. But he did say that he was going to try to talk with the NDP and with the independents, and it sounds like make a coalition because he did say that the Liberal government was not going to last a year here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So we'll have to wait and see how that unfolds. Yeah, something tells me it's either the NDP or the independents will be playing kingmaker. Uh, let's move on. Newfoundland is facing a rapidly aging population, limited health care access, people leaving the province, and, of course, debt. Do we know what the premier-elect's first priority is? Uh, it's, it's, you know, all of those issues. They've all been talked about extensively throughout this election. And before that going in, we had a, quite a few announcements uh, in terms of funding. We, we're seeing a new mental health facility that's being built. Uh, we have a new penitentiary that's supposed to be on the cusp. There's a lot of things at the forefront here. Muskrat Falls is one of those major things with rate mitigation coming into play this year. And so I think debt is the pressing issue for a lot of people, uh, people not being able to afford to live here anymore. And so that's why we're seeing a lot of people leave. The aging population, that is at the forefront of a lot of things too. That's taking a strain on our healthcare system. And so uh, we're seeing nurses having to pull 24 hour shifts because we don't necessarily have enough nurses to come in it because we can't necessarily pay enough. So we're seeing a lot of factors at play here and it's going to be a hard road ahead for the government, but one that, you know, wasn't forecasted. We did see that these issues were going to be continuing to press throughout the campaign and, and it's going to continue to press in the future here. So I think debt will probably be one of the largest things. We know that there's a spending problem and that has to be under control, but reaching $13 billion in debt right now that's it's a serious issue for this province and tv's kellyanne roberts thanks so much for the primer this morning we appreciate it thanks ben